Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to our next environmental data mapper training video. Today's video is going to be uh, highlighting the functions or the tools that we can use to select and export records or features uh, from within the environmental data mapper. Uh, so obviously selecting um, and exporting features is something that's uh, a very common workflow. We want to provide some tools that are relatively easy to use um, and very feature rich and powerful. So that's what we're gonna take a look at here. So with that said, I'll dive right in. Um, the primary tool that we're gonna be looking at can be found up here in the upper left. It's uh, when you hover over it, you'll see select and export features. It's kind of found underneath the search bar here. I'll go ahead and open that up. And the first thing you'll notice is you have a layer list that is uh, very intricately tied with our layer list widget. Um, that's because it essentially is the same thing. So any layer that shows up in the layer list should also show up here in the select and export features. Um, you'll notice up here there's a button that says select with a drop down button. Um, the default is select by rectangle, but this gives you multiple ways to select um, spatially features within the web mapping tool. Uh, one of my favorites and one that I'll demo here is select by lasso. It's kind of allows you to draw like an interactive or dynamic polygon um, to select things you may be interested in. So I'll go ahead and choose that. Um, but you'll notice right now that everything's grayed out or almost everything's grayed out. If we get down here at the bottom, we see our offices and Virginia County boundaries are actually checked on. That's because it's in sync with what's currently turned on in the map itself um, in the layer list. So if we scroll up here and I go in and turn on a couple other layers, I'll turn on, for example, our prep reports. If I scroll down here, we see that prep reports has now also been, um, you know, blackened or ungrayed out and it's selectable. So I'm going to go ahead and check that, uh, denoting that this is a layer that I want to be able to select on. Um, after that, as long as you've selected your uh, selection method, all you really have to do is zoom into an area that you're interested in, whether it be a neighborhood, county, um, you know, city boundary, or uh, you know, any other area of interest. I'll zoom in here just to Scottsville. And let's say that I want to get all of these prep reports um, in close proximity to Scottsville. All I have to do now is click this button to make sure that it knows you're ready to select. I can hold down the mouse button and I draw this interactive polygon, which you see here grab those points, but it also turned everything else blue. And that's because I did not turn off our county boundaries down here. And you'll see that I selected three. There happens to be three county boundaries in close proximity there. You can see the county line. Um, so if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see there's our three county boundaries. Let's say I didn't really care about those. I could just go in here um, and do clear selection. So I hit that a little ellipses next to the layer. Down at the bottom, you'll see clear selection. That gets rid of those points, but I left the prep report records that I wanted. And now I've accidentally selected a couple more, so I'll go ahead and clear those out. Um, and if I don't want to accidentally select anymore, I can just uncheck this, and now that's not going to be selectable anymore. So now I'm no longer grabbing those county boundaries. So if you find you're grabbing too much stuff that you don't want, you can go in here and just uncheck that layer. Uh, so now that we have some selected records, let's go back up here to our, um, to our prep report layer. And we see that we grabbed six. So we can click on it to see kind of like quick summary information about those six records. Or we could actually go and hit that ellipses that we saw earlier. And you'll see here that you have a variety of actions that you can do. Um, zoom to and pan to are pretty self-explanatory. But one of the powerful ways that allows you to extract data spatially here is this export CSV file. If I hit that, you'll see that I instantly downloaded that CSV file that contains all the attribution that you would find in the attribute table of our prep reports layer containing those six records. So that's a very, very powerful, very easy way to extract meaningful information out of here. Um, I'll click that ellipses again. If you're familiar with JSON or GeoJSON uh, formats, uh, you can also export to those formats here. Export to feature collection will download the JSON file. Uh, similarly, export to GeoJSON will obviously download the GeoJSON of those six features. Uh, statistics, um, it's kind of a neat tool, um, but if you want some summary statistics on that, and if a, um, if a layer happens to have numeric or nu uh, numeric type fields in it, you can actually perform some summary statistics on those fields as well. This one doesn't. 
Um, a pretty nifty one that we'll actually get into later when we want to look at um, some of the advanced um, analytics and workflows that you can do within the web mapping tool. Um, so I'll cover that in more detail in a subsequent video, but for now, just know that you can also create an individual layer. It's going to ask for the layer name, so I'm going to call this prep reports uh, subset. And you'll see here that it's actually added that as a new layer at the top of the layer list. And why that's nice is if you have, um, you know, a subset that you want to see and you only want to see that, you could then go in our prep reports and turn that layer off. And now, since we created that new subset layer, here, here it is. Um, so that's the only data that we're seeing. So it's a pretty neat way to kind of create a um, dynamic layer with only relevant information that you're interested in based off of your selection. And now that it is a layer, um, you know, you can do the all the functionality that you would normally be able to do with a layer as well as turn it on and off. So going back here, um, if you have an ArcGIS Online account, um, you can also save that exported or that uh, subset of data to your um, ArcGIS Online. And a couple last things here, uh, view and attribute table is actually going to open up the attribute table widget that we'll talk about um, that uh, we cover in another video. And uh, we'll show you those six selected records uh, that you're interested in. So, and it's already obviously selected those. Um, and if you hit clear selection, it's going to get rid of those and show you the whole data set. But since you came from the selection aspect, that's only showing you those six. And finally, um, obviously, if you're done with your selection, um, you can go in here or you want to make a new selection off of the same layer or different layer. You can just hit clear selection and that selection has been cleared out. As you can see now, the number count here is down to zero. So we know that that's been cleared out. Um, one other thing that's uh, pretty valuable and definitely worth showing in this demo is if I go back and turn on the entire data set, and this goes for point line or polygon layers, but again, I'll just use this point layer as a uh, demonstration. But if we wanted to we go to a more population dense area in Richmond, and let's grab a prep report record somewhere in Richmond area. So let's say I want to select this area near Williams Island, uh, near downtown Richmond. I can go in here, hit select again, create that new selection. I selected that record. Now that I only have one record, and you only have you have to only have one record of any type set, you can't do this with multiples. I can go down here and you see now this set location. This set location is kind of an integration between the select and export features tool and what we call the what's nearby or um, buffer analysis tool that you'll see up here in the upper right. We'll have a new video that again will document and cover that tool in detail, but it's worth mentioning that there is an integration there. So if you have a selected feature, as you're selected spatially, whether it's a point line or polygon, you can pass that selection as a location or a feature for input. Um, so what that just did is it actually passed that as the input point for this tool. It opened the tool and it applied the default buffer distance of 100 feet. If we want to bump that up, we can do so by just entering a new number and hitting enter. And now we can see all of the other layers that are spatially coincident or qualify for that spatial buffer. And again, we'll dive into this tool in more detail, but I wanted to show that there's a very powerful integration there between the select. So you can spatially select features and then pass it as inputs to a spatial buffer tool. Um, and then, of course, extract those relevant results from related layers that meet that spatial buffer criteria. Um, last but not least, just general tips and tricks of the tool. Um, if you're trying to select something and you don't see it selecting, make sure that the layer is turned on and make sure that it's selectable. Um, chances are, if you know for sure that something should be popping up as a qualifying record and it's not, the first step I would always do would be to go in and actually turn it on in the layer list itself so the layer is activated. And at that point, um, you know, perform your spatial selection and you'll see. And I mentioned also make sure you check it on because by default, these are not on as selected. So I drew something that should have returned selected features, but it didn't actually get anything. It just got a couple of the prep reports as those were checked on. But now, as you see, these are able to be checked on. So I can go in and turn those on and rerun that selection, and now we'll see all of our valid qualifying returns for those various layers.
So again, make sure that it's checked on, make sure that you have the layer activator checked on and selectable, um, and then do your selection and you should be good to go. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and uh, join us next time. We're going to take a look at the attribute table widget um, and some of the filtering capabilities as well as exporting that you can do from the attribute. So in this video we looked at spatial selections. Next time we're going to look at selecting by attribution, uh, filtering and extracting data from that aspect. Uh, thanks again and we'll see you next time.